Sulfates are actually not bad. Sulfates are uh, surfactants which actually clean your skin or your scalp. I actually stopped using so many brands because I heard that, you know. Th and a sulfate-free shampoo might actually be causing you more harm, which is not sulfate, it's sulfonate, it's different. But sulfonates are usually used in dishwash and oh, laund God. laundry detergents. So it doesn't mean sulfate-free is always good. Sulfates usually foam very nicely. If I have to get the same amount of foaming with a sulfate-free base, I might have to use a lot more surfactant, which can actually be drying to your hair. I really need to go back to my home and check my products now. Everything free I look for and still are and you know, whatever you make at home and all that. Because Uktan itself can be harsh for babies. Because uh, you grind it, yes, but the particle size is still high. It is almost as if you are scrubbing. Baby body washes, baby head-to-toe washes available with different brands. Uh, that can definitely be used. Hi, we are back with Dr. Padmavati. Dr. Padmavati, as a doctor of pharmacy, I want to know your view on how consumer can identify the right product to use for themselves. Okay, so that's a very basic criteria. Uh, we have huge brands here uh, like um, L'Oreal, Garnier, Lacme, uh, Dove. Those brands have been in the industry for so long, decades now they usually get their basics right because they have a whole team there. They need to get the safety right. They need to make sure the product is efficacious because somebody is going to sue them if not. So it is, you can, if you're a very basic, uh, you know, you're just getting into skincare, you can definitely trust those brands and start. Uh, if you want to get a makeup product, you can obviously get Lakme products. If you want to get a shampoo, you can get Trust Me. But if you are a little more uh, into skincare and you want to pick out what exact products you want, there are a few things you can keep in mind. Uh, to start with, I think I'll tell you about what to avoid and then we'll come to what you have to look for. At this point, you can definitely avoid parabens because uh, parabens are endocrine disruptors. Uh, earlier, there used to be only animal studies, but now there are uh, human studies also happening and it is a proven endocrine disruptor. In endocrine disruptor means the chemical compound is going to get into your body and act like your uh, hormones, like it kind of it will act like estrogen or uh, progesterone or androgens, those kind of hormones, and make the, your body will think it is that and start reacting to it. So there are a lot of endocrine disruptors now. So there are, um, as I said, paraben, and then there are fragrance allergens. Uh, in your cosmetic products, you might have seen uh, a few um, difficult sounding names like uh, limonene, uh, geraniol, eugenol, coumarin. These are actually fragrance allergens. If you take a shampoo and see these kind of names over there, it doesn't mean somebody has added it specifically for your shampoo. It is not doing anything. It is part of the fragrance that they've added. A few of the fragrance allergens are endocrine disruptors and a lot of them are contact allergens. So when, uh, when it get, gets in contact with somebody who has specific allergy to that raw material or, or, or generally has a sensitive skin, that, is, that can cause um, allergic reaction. It can cause uh, rash, uh, redness, irritation, all that. So that is something you can um, avoid. And then when you have uh, a leave-on product, like, uh, like a cream or a serum, but which is left on on your skin for a longer time, there you can avoid essential oils at a higher concentration. Essential oils are... Um, um, for example, a bergamot oil or an orange oil, uh, sage oil. So these oils are usually again added for its fragrance uh, compounds. Uh, they also have a little bit of uh, skincare benefits, but in a leave-on product, again, these can cause some uh, irritation. So these oils are used in candles and you know diffusers also, even yeah. that is harm. No, no, that is fine. When it gets in contact with your skin for a longer period of time, at that point, it can cause irritation. So if you have essential oils in your soap or a body wash, it's fine. It doesn't matter. If you have it in your cream and at a, if you can, if you smell the cream and it's very powerful smelling, it's probably because you've added a higher concentration of uh, essential oils, which is not very good. So that is something you can avoid. What about avoid. perfumes? It's the same logic. Perfumes, as again, as I said, uh, if there are allergens in it, you need to be careful. If at all you have a very sensitive skin or if you are prone to uh, dermatitis or if you have conditions like eczema or psoriasis, you can avoid the fragrance allergens. We have uh, many brands now which are completely fragrance free or there are uh, newer brands coming up with allergen free fragrance. Uh, that, that is a guideline by European Union where they have uh, they have a list of around 82 or 83 fragrance allergens now, uh, which usually give your fragrances a very nice 
uh, smelling effect. Like if you take a Bath and Body Works product, it is going to smell very nice, but it might have all these allergens. So you have to look for brands that specifically use allergen-free fragrance if you have very sensitive skin. You know, um, I heard uh, a beauty expert, like I was just talking to somebody in a parlor once long back, and they said that when you are buying products uh, for your hair and your skin, it's better to buy from a parlor or uh, you know because if it's off the shelf in a store it probably has a lower quality and if it's in a is that true no no no, no that is not true by talk see uh, l'oreal if you take l'oreal as a brand they can make products for um, at home use and for salon use and more or less they use the same kind of formulary i actually right? stopped using so many brands because i heard that you know that's no, so silly no, i'm the not, not at all not at all they probably use the same formula even and then just say, uh, change the perfume and the color and a couple of actives it might be the exact same formula because that's how they can optimize the cost and uh, the products that you get in your supermarkets doesn't mean it's of low, low quality uh, to make sure that it is not of low quality, these are these are certain things you can avoid, like the endocrine disruptors, the fragrance allergens, essential oils. And then comes the free from claim about sulfate and silicones. Sulfates are actually not bad. Sulfates are uh, surfactants which actually clean your skin or your scalp. Uh, they bind with the dirt and uh, pollutants which are usually oil soluble. They emulsify that and take it out. That's how they work. There are other surfactants also which are sulfate free, which means they are not, the compound doesn't have, the, the chemical doesn't have the compound sulfate in it. They also do the same job, but sulfate has nothing to do, you don't have to worry about sulfate actually. It is about the whole formulation. I can have sulfates in a shampoo and make the whole formulation very gentle and uh, efficacious for you. And a sulfate free shampoo might actually be causing you more harm. It depends on the formulation and on the brand. I see a lot of brands now uh, doing sulfate-free shampoos, but they have uh, compounds like uh, olefin sulfonate, which is not sulfate, it's sulfonate, it's different, but sulfonates are usually used in uh, dishwash and oh, laundry, laundry, laundry detergents. So it doesn't mean sulfate-free is always good. Or um, I will make a shampoo with sulfate at... Um, at let's say a 14 or 15 percent active detergent if i have to get sulfate usually foam very nicely if i have to get the same amount of foaming with a sulfate free base i might have to use a lot of a uh, lot more surfactant which can actually be drying to your hair so it is about the whole formula you cannot simply vilify a sulfates and silicones silicones again uh, silicones they say it can deposit on your hair it can build on your hair yes some silicones can but not all um, silicones actually condition your hair very much so for hair moisturization is not about putting in water it is about actually coating it it is uh, you are actually making the hair hydrophobic which means the water from the environment is not getting into your hair because if the water from the environment which is humidity is getting into your hair your hair is actually going to become frizzy you need something to protect your hair from the humidity that's where silicones come in silicones if formulated properly are actually very good for your hair that's what gives you gives you the shine the conditioning effect the uh, frizz taming the uh, you know the softness of your hair so we don't have to vilify these ingredients. I really need to go back to my home and check my products now. There's so much of misinformation. I keep looking for this free, everything free I look for. And yeah. actually I have noticed in the last two years my hair is so frizzy. Mm -hmm. I just thought, okay, maybe it's an aging thing. And now I'm really questioning my own choices. That is one thing. If, if at all you are very worried about product built up on your hair, you can uh, use a clarifying shampoo probably once or twice a month. That is going to take care of all your uh, build up. Clarifying Cla shampoo? Clarifying shampoo. So clarifying shampoo is like a deep cleanse for your scalp and hair. So uh, if, if you if you are a person who uses a lot of leave-on products, let's say you use a, a leave-in cream, then you put on a serum, then you put on a mousse, uh, usually it comes to um, curly hair routine now. No? They, have, they have a lot of products that they put on your hair. For that, at, when you have a lot of leave-in products, then buildup can happen. To avoid that, you can use a clarifying shampoo, which you get um, on, on with your uh, regular supermarket also, or with a salon brand, which will deep cleanse your um, hair and scalp. It will remove all the buildup. So after you use a clarifying shampoo, your hair can feel a little dry, uh, but you can top it up with a conditioner and go about your regular routine. You know, uh, there are uh, a lot of products I still see uh, when I, I know there are parabens in it. You know, till now, 
actually from the entire conversation what i understand is the only real problem is you should not go for paraben a uh, products yeah. with paraben in it. yes so paraben is something you can avoid yeah. and why are there still products in the market which have parabens i'll tell you parabens are actually preservatives so preservatives uh, make sure your product uh, doesn't have any microbial growth in it it can have bacteria or fungal growth something to avoid that is where paraben comes in now parabens are very effective preservatives uh there is uh, no preservative till now in the market that works as effective as parabens that's why everybody uh, puts it parabens are found not only in cosmetic products but in your food products as well you take cough syrups you take antacids it can have parabens in it because it it has to be protected from microbes uh studies on the endocrine disruptions are coming lately only so still pharma companies do use parabens um uh, and it's also cost effective So it increases the shelf life of the product. Yes, yes. It makes sure your product doesn't grow any microbes. But if applying something parabens on your skin is so harmful, how can consuming it will be so harmful? It can be. Oh, I I didn't know there was. Were... Now there are alternate preservatives for it. Uh, just like parabens, there are also a different category of preservatives called uh, isothiazolinones, which is uh, you might be seeing it as MIT or MCIT on your uh, product ingredients list, uh, which is also something you have to avoid because those are contact allergens. Because after parabens, MIT and MCIT are very efficacious preservatives, but again they have some safety concerns now. If you were to take a sample size of the products available in India, what percent of products today in India are still harmful? Even after so much of knowledge, you know, so much of education happening around uh, the kind of quality of the product, what percentage of products available in the market are harmful to the common man? We I cannot give you an exact percentage because now a lot of newer brands don't use parabens. Um, not because uh, of the endocrine disruption but because people know it is something they have to avoid just because of the the claims around it but i would say uh, most of the new new age brands they don't have parabens uh, the bigger brands do have parabens but i also see them slowly moving to the new generation preservatives like you know i started the conversation with we cosmetic usage starts at birth uh, with child care products and uh, uh, teens and adults and babies young kids so my family for example you know they were very pr- protective like about my son uh, they said no no you have to do uptan uh, we till our chamav and you know whatever you ba- make at home and all that is there actually a age limit after which only people should use or children should use uh, cosmetics